as you can see in the main salon, there was clothes on the floor, there was empty bottles of champagne, bottles of vodka, empty bottles of wine. So during my time working on board Motor Yacht Lizzie, which was a 75 foot Lazara, the first few years, it was just myself and the stew, so just two crew. And around 2012, 2013, more or less, the owner decided that he wants to buy what we call a chase boat. So a large, essentially it's a larger tender. And by getting the third chase boat, we needed to hire a third crew member. Now at this time, we were birthed or based better said in a place called Port Galice which is in a town in the south of France called Joanne Le Pan very nice little port there and so the owner decided to buy this boat which was built by Capelli Tempest it was a 770 and it had a little cabin on board air conditioning a little toilet and so the third crew member will be sleeping on the tender so we put a job post out on the social media platforms. We also advertised the position at the local crew houses in, in Antibes, put posts on the crew boards, and we got a few applicants. And there was this one chap that applied, an English guy. Um, for the, I won't mention his real name, but you know, we'll call him John for now. Um, so he, he applied for the job. He had a relatively good CV. He had the qualifications required to run the chase boat. So I gave him a call uh, to arrange a interview. So we arranged the call, all good. We arranged the interview. And in the interview, he's a very well-spoken guy. You know, obviously came from a, a good background. Um, he certainly talked the talk. Um, he certainly said the things that I was hoping to hear shall we say and after interview we finished the interview we interviewed two or three other candidates and we decided to offer him the position on a trial basis normally you do a trial you know, some boats are different some are one month some are two some can be up to three months long but in our case it was just a one month trial so we, we agreed to bring him on board to you know to do the job and so he came he started the job uh, he arrived on time to the boat, on time to work, and we spent a few days on board. At the time, we were doing lots of sanding and varnishing. We were sanding the teak decks, the cap and rails, and varnishing. Before we continue, I'm delighted to announce that today's video has been brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. It holds up to 12 cards, plus there's room for cash. There's over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. The wallet has over 40,000 five-star reviews. The durable material means each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it, they'll let you test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. It's made with RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpockets. So be sure to use my link in the description box below. Use discount code SYC to get 10% off. That's discount code SYC to get 10% off. Thanks again to the Ridge Wallet for sponsoring today's video. So after that first week, um, I had already booked to fly to the United Kingdom to do my Office of the Watch um, oral examination. So I was going to be doing what we call a oral prep week where you go to a school and they prepare you for the, ex the oral, oral examination with an MCA examiner and sit the exam. And at that same week, my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, um, had her mother visiting from South Africa. So she had planned to be off um, for those days. And so we were going to leave this new crew member, John, uh, on board with a list, list of jobs to do. Now, at this time, he had given me no reasons to doubt him, no reasons why we couldn't trust him. And um, so I gave him a list of work to do. It was pretty straightforward. It, it was basically what we've been doing up until that point. It was more standing, varnishing, do keeping the boat clean, wash downs, and I think I gave him a list of doing the engine room at cleaning bilges, that kind of stuff. So there was a list of things to do. Um, I said to him, you know, I don't expect you to finish everything, but make sure you are progressing, you know, every every day. 
So I fly to the UK, my missus, her mother comes over from South Africa and we're off, we leave him alone on the boat. Um, at this point he was confident with the boat, he knew the systems, he knew how everything worked, so we made sure he was um, comfortable operating all the systems on board the boat. Anyway, um, about three or four days I'm away, uh, I get a, um, a call from my, from my wife saying, that she was at a beach restaurant with her mum in Juan La Pan, which is the town where the where the boat was. So that where the town was, where the where all the restaurants were, the port was slightly further around inside inside the bay. And she said that she could see what appeared to be our tender out at anchor, right? Um with two people on board, it looked like it looked like him, but she couldn't tell because it's quite far away and a girl. So I said to her, "Well, I'll tell you what, just just um, finish lunch and um, give him a call, see what he's up to, and and to find out what's happening." Right. So she calls him. She says, "Oh, I'm Israel Pan. I'm going to pop round to the boat in five ten minutes." Right. At this point, she could still see the tender, you know, at anchor, but she couldn't really see who was on board and she couldn't confirm that it was our tender. So the moment that she put the phone down, she could see that the tender at that moment was lifting anchor and heading straight into the port. And eventually my missus, you know, drove into the port and uh, asked me, what have you been up to you taking the tender out? And he was like, oh no, I was just doing some sea trials, you know, doing practicing, testing it. And she said to him, do you have anybody else on board the boat with you? And he said, no, 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 it was, just, it was just me, you know. And I did say to him, you know, if you want, spend an hour or two a day going out practicing with a tender. And what I meant by practicing is like maneuvering, docking, not going out, dropping the anchor, you know, and chilling out. But she couldn't prove that um, he was lying. But there was certainly, she said there was certainly a second person on the boat. So she called me back, she told me the whole situation. I said, okay, do me a favor. First thing tomorrow morning, I know, you, I know you're spending time with your mum, but just go down to the boat and see what's going on. See if he's starting work, see if he's doing his jobs. So what she did the next morning, uh, she gets to the boat around 7.30. We normally start work around eight. The passerelle, which we'll call the, the gangway, was down. The stanchions holding the handrail for the gangway was completely bent and, and damaged. So not a good start. She goes up to the aft deck. Um, the covers for the cushions was all uncovered. There was empty glasses, right, on, on the table. She gets to the door, the access door, tries to open the door. Door's locked, but she and it's tinted glass, but she could see in, and she could see in the main salon, there was clothes on the floor, there was empty bottles of champagne, bottles of vodka, empty bottles of wine. And she could see that he was on board because there were shoes left on the, on the aft deck. So he started knocking, knocking, knocking. And she had a key, but um, did she have a key or not? But the door, was, the way the door was locked, the key wouldn't work. Something like that anyway. So she was banging, 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 knocking, knocking, knocking. And then she went to the front of the boat on the outside, no answer, bang, 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 knock, knock, knock. And eventually this guy, John, pops out, right? And he's obviously had a bit of a, a, bit of a party on board while I'm away. And uh, Jiv, my missus, is just absolutely furious. So at the time, luckily, we were very good friends with the boats, with the captain, well, we still are good friends actually, with the captain on the boat next door, um, Jim. So he was there to kind of um, mediate things and, you know, keep things calm. And so this guy comes out, opens the door, and she's like, what? I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, politely. What do you think you're doing? This is completely unacceptable. What's going on? What's happened? You know, explain. How did this How did this happen, right? And so he starts going on this, on this BS story. And obviously I'm the captain, so I get a phone call from, from Jiv, from my missus. She's obviously angry and upset because we have a lot of, we had a lot of care for the owner, for the boat. You know, it's, uh, it's our careers, our jobs, and he's jeopardizing that, right? 
So I could tell he was very ups- she was very upset. And I, we put the phone down. I said, I tell you what, I'm going to call him. And in all honesty, I probably not the right approach. I kind of found it quite funny. So I knew I was going to fire him. You know, it's inevitable. He was going to get fired. But I just thought to myself, the cojones on this guy to do, you know, what he did. And so I call him up. I say, John, you know, what's, what's the story, man? So he starts giving me this, this whole, you know, Tristan, you know, I'm really sorry. I messed up this, that, and the other. And so I said, okay, um, let me ask you a question. I want you to be completely honest with me here. He goes, right. I said, did you take the tender out yesterday? And he goes, yes, I did. Well, you said to me, take it out to practice this, that, and the other. I did. I said, yeah, you're right, I did. Did you take it out to anchor? He goes, you know what? I actually, I did, yeah. Okay. Anything else you want to tell me about that day on the tender? He goes, no. I took it out and I went for a swim. I was like, okay, anything else you want to tell me? He goes, no. I said, okay, are you sure? He goes, yeah. I said, did you have a girl on board the tender with you? He goes, I did, yeah. He, he, and he said, how did you know? I said, We're, I have eyes everywhere. He didn't know that my wife had seen him. So I, and then he said, look, Tristan, I'm really sorry. He drunk the boss's expensive champagne. We're talking like Dom Perignon. We're talking very expensive wines, good quality vodka. I'm really, really sorry. I messed up. Can I redeem myself? The cheek of this guy. Can I redeem myself? So I said to him, look, John, and by this time I wasn't angry because, you know, being angry, you're not going to achieve anything, right? He's getting the sack anyway. So I said, you want to redeem yourself. So you took the chase boat out. You knew what you were doing was wrong. You basically lied to me already, telling me there was nothing else you want to tell me. And I told you you had a girl on board. You admitted to that, right? You've gone on board the boat. You've brought on a stranger on board. And I specifically said, do not bring anybody on board without my permission. You drunk the boss's alcohol. You did whatever you did in the guest cabins with your girlfriend or, you know, lady acquaintance or whoever she was. And you want to redeem yourself. So I said to him, I tell you what, you put yourself in my shoes, right? What would you do? And he said, I'd probably fire me. And I said, you've basically determined your fate, you know, do yourself a favor pack your bags, clear up the boat. Um, we're going to assess the damage because he damaged the gangway and you're off the boat, right? So he got he got sacked. Um, he, did, he took his time to get off the boat. He was obviously very hungover. I was very thankful for Jim, the captain next door. He helped out. Um, by, this, by this stage, you know, my missus was fuming, shaking. Um, what, what, you know, I was talking to Jim on the phone as well. So anyway, he got sat, he got kicked off the boat. And this goes to show really, um, you've got to be so careful who you trust. You know, I, I always like giving people benefit of the doubt. And if they let you down, they let themselves down, really. I mean, it is what it is. The funny thing is, a few years later, I was now the captain on board AWOL. And we bought a uh, the chase boat through a company. We bought it, we bought it uh, pre-owned through a company bought the boat no problem at all about a year later i get a phone call from a representative of the company asking me about the the chase boat asking you know things like uh, it was more about gathering data what we do like about it what we would change about it the benefits and they were just trying to get some uh, do some market research and the guy introduced himself a, a different name and we were talking we we're talking and about a third way through a third of the way through the conversation I recognized the voice. I said, sorry, what's your name again? And he said some of the, some of the name, Let, let's say Joe, right? And we're talking, we're talking. And I said, I know this voice, I know this voice, I know this voice. And it clicked. And I was like, that's John. I said, sorry, mate, is this John? And he goes, uh, 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 Yes, actually it is. But hold on a second. I said, don't ever phone me again. I never want to hear from you again. Don't pretend to be somebody else when you call me. Put the phone down. I immediately phoned up his boss. I said to him, I'd been talking to the boss a few times before, or his boss a few times before. I said to him, look, 
I don't know what your deal is with that guy. I don't want anything to do with him. He can never call me again, right? I told him the story. I said, be very careful with that guy. He cannot be trusted. And turns out, I think about two, three weeks later, uh, he got sacked because he messed up again. Um, so, yeah, that's the story. You know, this guy, he gave the impression that he was going to be a fantastic crew member. He said all the right things. He had all the right paperwork. And, you know, he conned us into believing that he was going to be, you know, a great third crew member. Uh, but he let us down. Um, so just be careful who you hire out there, guys. That's the end of the day story. Hope you enjoyed it. Check out the other crew stories we have uh, in the playlist and uh, hoping to do some more. If you are a crew in the super yacht industry and you would like to share a story with us, then get in touch in our Instagram account. Give us a little summary about your story. And uh, if we like it, we'll get on video and post it onto this YouTube channel to share with the, uh, with the audience. All right, guys. See you soon. Ciao, ciao.